Hi everybody, this video is for section 6.2, combining random variables. And in this video, we're going to take a look at rules for when we have one or more random variables that we might be interested in transforming or combining together. We have three example problems today to look at. So our first problem today deals with a type of bathtub made for infants, comes with the dials to set the water temperature. And when the baby safe setting is selected and the tub is filled, uh, the temperature of the water follows a normal distribution, but we're given the information in Celsius. The mean is 34 degrees Celsius, the standard deviation is 2 degrees Celsius. We'd like to know the mean and the standard deviation Fahrenheit. So first of all, two things. First of all, we're given the distribution here, x, the temperature of the water, uh, follows a normal distribution. We have the mean and the standard deviation. One other piece of information we might need is that formula for converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, and this is formula that you might remember from science class, where you take the temperature in Celsius, you add 32, and then you multiply by 9 fifths. So keep in mind that two things are occurring here. We're taking a distribution, adding 32 to it, and then multiplying the result by 9 fifths. Back in previous chapters, we saw that when you add a number to a distribution, it influences the mean, but not the standard deviation. And when you multiply a distribution by a number like 9 fifths, the standard deviation and the mean are both affected by that multiplication. So we're going to use those facts now to come up with two different rules. If we uh, have a new random variable based on a uh, previous random variable, and we do a linear transformation on that variable, well, here's what will happen to the mean and the standard deviation. The mean of the new variable, y, will be influenced by both the multiplication and the addition, and the standard deviation will only be influenced by the multiplication and not the addition. So two rules there for you to write down. You might want to pause as you write them down. But now we use those rules, and we can let y equal the water temperature in Fahrenheit, we can find the new mean by plugging in 34 into the formula for Fahrenheit, and we have a new temperature in Fahrenheit. And we can do the same thing for the standard deviation. In this case, we only multiply by 9 fifths. So we have a new distribution now where y has a normal distribution with a mean of 118.8, which seems a little warm for me, and 3.6. Okay, next up, we're going to take a look at an example where we want to add two random variables together. Here we have information about two tour groups, Pete's Tours, where every day he takes passengers out on his tour. And you can see the number of passengers there and the probability that we have that many passengers. Some days we might have two passengers. Some days we might have as many as six. And Erin's Adventures, same deal. She has between two and five passengers every day, and we're given her probability. And we're also given the mean and the standard deviation, which you could have done in the last section using the rules for random variables and probability distributions. What I'd like to know is, combine between Pete's Tours and Erin Adventures, what is the total number of, um, what is the mean number of people we should expect, what's the expected value, and what's the standard deviation? So first of all, if t equals x plus y, if we want the total, basically this first rule says that we're allowed to add the means, and that should seem to make sense here. So in this case, we can take 3.75, which is the mean for Pete's Tours, and 3.10, which is the mean for Erin's Adventures, and we can just add those together, which means combined, on average, they average 6.85 passengers per day. That's their expected value. Now, standard deviation is a little bit trickier, because keep in mind where standard deviation comes from. It comes from taking the squared deviations, adding those all together, finding our average, and then taking the square root of that. Standard deviation is essentially a square root. And we know from past experiences that we cannot add square roots together easily. For example, root 3 plus root 5 does not equal root 8. But what we can do is we can take the squares of those, which we know is the variances, and we can add those together. So this is a rather important rule, and, and what I would do in your notes is put stars next to this one. What this rule essentially says is to find the standard deviation of a combined distribution, you have to add the variances. And then we'll take the square root of that to get the combined standard deviation. So putting that all together, that means the variance of the total is 1.09 squared that gives us the variance for Pete's Tours, plus 0.943 squared that gives us the variance for Aaron's Adventures. We can add those together. We take the square root of that, and we can find that the standard deviation of the combined distribution is 1.44. So next, I want to consider a case where I might want to subtract these two distributions. What if I want to know, on average, how many passengers Pete's Tours has more than Aaron's Adventures on a daily basis, on average. Well, the means, it seems like I should be able to subtract those, and I can. You can subtract means just like you can add means. But standard deviation is a little bit trickier. 
Now, we're going to do some examples in class that will show why this is true. But when you're subtracting distributions, you still add the variances. Variances always add. And that might seem a little counterintuitive at this point. And again, we'll do some examples in class to kind of show why that is. One quick reason why, though, is imagine if they had the same standard deviation. If we squared those, they would have the same variance. But if we subtracted them, suddenly we'd have a variance of zero, implying that there's, on average, no difference between the two days. And that doesn't seem true. So variance is at. So let's take a look at the difference between Peak Tours and Aaron's Adventures. First of all, I can subtract their means from each other. 3.75 minus 3.10 means, on average, Peak Tours has 0.65 more passengers than Aaron's Adventures. And next, their standard deviations, um, we're going to add the variances together. 1.09 squared, just like we did in the last example. We take the square root of that, we still get 1.44. So we have the same standard deviation as we had before because variances add. So the main thing to remember here, and one of the big ideas for this section, is that variances add, standard deviations do not, and variances add under any situation, whether you're adding distributions or you're subtracting distributions. One last example. Here's one last example that will tie together everything from this section. So we have diameters of randomly selected large drink cups at a fast food restaurant. They form, follow a normal distribution. We are given the mean number of inches and the standard deviation. We also have lids. The lids also follow a normal distribution, but there's some little variability to them. They have a mean of 3.98 inches, and they have a standard deviation as well. And we want those lids to fit on the cups. The value L has to be bigger than the value of C. Lids have to be bigger than cups. But we don't want them so big that the lids go falling off. So it can't go uh, by more than 0.06 inches. So the lid can't be more than 0.06 inches bigger than the cup is. So let me put this together in symbols here. I had the distribution for lids. I had the distribution for cups. And I want to know when is L minus C greater than 0 but less than 0.06? The symbols really do matter here, and you'll find throughout this chapter that writing precise symbols for everything will really help you communicate um, what's going on here. And this helps me see that I really want the distribution for L minus C. Well, that means I want to subtract two distributions from each other and look at the results. Well, I know from the rules that we just looked at that I can subtract means from each other. So I can take the mean of the lids, the mean of the cups, subtract those, I get 0.02. Standard deviation, even though I'm, I'm still subtracting distributions, variances add. So if I added the variances here, I take the square root of that, and I have the standard deviation of the difference between lids and cups. One last little piece I need here, though, very important fact, is that if both distributions are approximately normal, any sum or difference of independent normal random variables is also normally distributed. So I kind of need that fact here. What that allows me to say now is that lids minus cups follow a normal distribution, I see their mean, I see their standard deviation, and then this really just becomes a norm CDF problem from earlier chapters. I want the probability that L minus C is between 0 and 0 0.06. I probably use norm CDF in my calculator, and I can see that that has a probability of 0.777. So a lot of different rules here. Variances add, they never subtract. Standard deviations don't add them together.